Alright guys, welcome back to The Existential Way. We just finished part 2 of Your Faith. And in closing, uh, the part 3 is going to cover a chapter of Kierkegaard's spiritual writings. Chapter 51, Gospel for the Poor. And I want you to take spiritual note of the delineation between who the gospel is for and why. And also how it's changed the intent of um, the poor. Okay? And how it's changed in today's system of Christianity in this reading. Alright, chapter 51, Gospel for the Poor. In closing... Christ was not making a historical observation when he declared, The gospel is preached to the poor. The accent is on the gospel, that the gospel is for the poor. Here the word poor does not simply mean poverty, but all who suffer are unfortunate, wretched, wronged, oppressed, crippled, lame, leprous, demonic. The gospel is preached to them, that is, the gospel is for them. The gospel is good news for them. What good news? Not money, health, status, and so on. No, this is not Christianity. No, for the poor, the gospel is the good news because to be unfortunate in this world in such a way that one is abandoned by human sympathy and the worldly zest for life even cruelly tries to make one's mis misfortune into guilt is a sign of God's nearness. So it was originally. This is the gospel in the New Testament. It is preached for the poor. And it is preached by the poor who, if they in other respects were not suffering, would eventually suffer by proclaiming the gospel. Since suffering is inseparable from following Christ, from telling the truth. Now guys, right here as I continue, you're going to see the delineation in terms of what Kierkegaard is talking about when he when he's referring to the gospel being for the poor and why we must keep to this understanding because a lot of us we're receiving the gospel because of the trial and, and tribulation that we're going through as targets and as believers okay i continue but soon there came a change when preaching the gospel became a livelihood even a lush livelihood then the gospel became good news for the rich and for the mighty. For how else was the preacher to acquire and secure rank and dignity unless Christianity secured the best for all? Christianity thus ceased to be glad tidings for those who suffer. A message of hope that transfigures suffering into joy, but a guarantee for the enjoyment of life intensified and secured by the hope of eternity. The gospel no longer benefits the poor essentially. In fact, Christianity has now even become a downright injustice to those who suffer, although we are not always conscious of this and certainly unwilling to admit to it. Today the gospel is preached to the rich, the powerful, who have discovered it to be advantageous. We are right back again to the very state original Christianity wanted to oppose. Let me read that again. We are right back again to the very state original Christianity wanted to oppose. The rich and powerful not only get to keep everything, but their success becomes the mark of their piety, the sign of their relationship to God. And this prompts the old atrocity again, namely, the idea that the unfortunate, the poor, are to blame for their condition. That is because they are, they are not pious enough are not true Christians, that they are poor, whereas the rich have not only pleasure, but piety as well. This is supposed to be Christianity. Compare it with the New Testament, and you will see that this is as far from that as possible. Let me read that last sentence again. This is supposed to be Christianity. Compare it with the New Testament, and you will see that this is as far from that as possible. Wow, so this is, this is the closing message that I felt moved by in spirit to read from because the gospel 
in its true nature and its true power stemming from those who God appoints by way of his supernatural place it still exists for the poor today its proper place is the message for the poor and those who are poor in spirit those who are once again unfortunate who suffer are wretched, wronged, oppressed, crippled, lame, leprous, and demonic. That's who the that's who the gospel is for. Now we can see the state run system of, of evangelical Christianity today, and it doesn't desire the gospel to be for such the type. So under the understand this when you are being targeted or when you are a targeted individual and you're going through these trials and these sufferings and these persecutions we are originally who the gospel is for I think we are the ones who are to acquire the promise because of our placement not just because we're poor but for the fact that we are the only ones who can receive the gospel in its right measure um, and the full power of, of God's witness thereof. But like Kierkegaard says, soon there came a change. And that change came by way of establishing a religion to the Babylonian system, the established order of what we have today. And as Kierkegaard says, the gospel no longer benefits the poor essentially. In fact, Christianity has now even become a downright injustice, injustice to those who suffer. So, and this is very important in understanding is, there are two types of believers that are being talked about here. The, 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 the believer type who are the poor, who the gospel was originally intended for, and who is still in its full power intended for, for those who suffer. And then you have the, the type who are, are benefiting from the advantageous position they have in making the gospel a livelihood and using self-proclaimers to gang stalk in the name of Christ. Those who the gospel is intended for. And so this is why I believe this was an important reading, is for the very fact that there is a delineation between who the gospel is for um, yet also seeing who parades around the gospel by, by those who it's not for. But since they have a place of status in this world, um, they get away with what they're doing while we get gang stalked and targeted and suffer. Um, but remember, guys, that the hope of Christ is, is to know that the good news is for us. The gospel is for the poor. So I leave you guys with that this evening. Be blessed. Be spiritually discerning. Commit everything you hear for me to God. Okay? Um, I pray for you guys, and I... And I you know, continue bearing, you know, hopefully we can continue bearing one another's cross. You know, if one believing T.I. falls down, we can be there in spirit, you know. Um, and so, once again, guys, have a blessed evening. Until the next one. All right, guys. Godspeed.